So good question. I think uh, I think we're too hesitant with nitro drips in general. Uh, we often use nitro paste as a poor man's nitro drip, which is probably not optimal. So I have a much lower threshold than I used to of putting them on a low dose nitro drip if they don't do well with the sublinguals and then ramping up a nitro drip with higher and higher doses. Okay. Uh, I am fine with morphine, but it's not really going to save your bacon. Okay, so if nitro is not working, you can give morphine, but keep in mind morphine works for everything. Um, so just because they're getting improved pain with that doesn't mean that you fix the underlying issue with the suspected acute coronary syndrome. So in that hypothetical patient that for some reason you're not going to the cath lab, you should just go to the cath lab. Um, it's part of the guidelines of refractory pain suspected to be due to acute coronary syndrome that they all go to the cath lab. Doesn't matter if they have ST elevations, even in STEMIs uh, that have refractory pain and maximum medical management all go to the cath lab. So we spend all this time debating, oh, how many millimeters up and what leads and what, who cares? If they have continued pain and you think that it truly is related to their heart, they all go to the cath lab. Yeah, I would agree. I, that last part was was key, actually. I think that was one of the things I was going to add is, is knowing who needs to go to the cath lab. And in not all cases, it's that, that patient who's having a STEMI. So if they have an ischemic looking EHG or even if they don't and they're having chest pain that you think is acute coronary syndrome, you need to get the cardiologist in to evaluate and take the cath lab. The other thing I would add is echo. All right. If you see a wall that's knocked out, that's hard to argue with. All right. And you have that capability to put a probe on that patient's chest and upload that to the web now. So you can send that and say, listen, I just did a, just do a short axis all the way down the LV and get a couple of images of the basal segment, right? Up at the root of the heart, the mid segment where the papillary muscles are and down at the apex. And you can upload that. If you have, if you have concerns about reading yourself, upload it and let the cardiologist take a look at it. And they may come down and do their own echo, but at least you're being an advocate for the patient and going to the next step. And that's a great point with the echo. If it's positive and you have a new or presumptively new wall motion abnormality, go to the cath lab. Like that, that's a pretty clear indication to me. Refractory pain and they, they've got wall motion abnormalities, just do it. Um, but the key thing, and you'll, you'll run into this a few times, if you're missing those wall motion abnormalities on a non-stress bedside echo that you or a formal echo team is doing, do not think that, that rules out ACS, okay? That's a common thing I've heard from a few fellows, not true. So it's really more of a rule in than a rule out thing. If, if like Rich says, you got this wall motion abnormality that's new, you know what, you're done. Call them, you need to go to the cath lab, okay? If you don't see it, that doesn't mean that you're safe. It just means that it may not have fully infarcted enough to where you have a wall motion abnormality.